Uh, hello and welcome to episode five of Can I Write an Album? Today I wanted to just talk about um, uh, the drum part for Decredence. Back to um, back to that after the brief the discussion about vacate. Um, it may be that we've missed out on unfortunately this month's submission to Rick Beato, but uh, um, I'm still hoping we'll get it in. If not, definitely it will go in next month. But um, so back to work on Decredence. Um, pretty pleased with progress actually so last night I managed to lay down a drum part which covers the whole um, song as it is at the moment so with the length it is at the moment um, I have had a few thoughts um, on what I'd like to do with it to uh, what parts I feel I should write and add in which I'll maybe go through in this video um, I'll also go over a little bit of the drum beat itself so you can hear what that sounds like um, and then obviously start talking about what my next steps will be um, but so yeah uh, so I've got to a point where I am now happy with the um, drum pattern as a, as a as a basis actually I don't think there's anything that I'll need to change about this overall in terms of its fundamentals um, I don't think I'll need to play it again or try and record it again. I think that much of it is done. Um, it may require some minor adjustments and it certainly requires some fills and some more dynamics. But at the moment, I've got it to the point where I'm happy with it. So, um, the idea was here, I'll show you kind of what I'm trying to do. I watched a video um, recently on miking uh, drums, again Rick Beata who um, was talking about a gentleman called uh, Glyn Johns um, who was an engineer in the 60s and 70s and miked many of the most famous drum sounds. I'll put a link to the video so if you want full beans you can go there to get it but so essentially he created a three mic method three or four mic I think he said in the video but I'm trying to get as close to that essentially as I can with what I'm doing here so um, I thought I'd just go over it quickly, um, play a bit of this. I've got a bass drum, snare drum, full kit. Um, I'll show you what the full kit sounds like. So this is um, in the second verse. So I've got that and I've got uh, then snare track. Oh no, bass drum, sorry. Um, and, then, just... and then a snare. Um, so, that's in there. And the idea is that then obviously I can, I can add effects to each in turn. Um, now, I know there's, of course, no way of simulating uh, live drums um, here. I can't get the bleed in each of the tracks to play with, like I've got none of those elements that would naturally be picked up in a miking situation. I'm just working purely with samples now. Um, so, but still, uh, you know, I've got no other choice in this situation, so essentially this is the best I can do. Or, in my opinion, this is the best I can do. I'm sure there are other ways of doing it. I don't claim knowledge on that. but. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got the full kit. The idea of that is that it is the overheads, um, and then I've got a snare drum, a snare drum mic, and a um, again, there's no toms in here at the moment um, in the beat itself, apart from one section, um, and they're on the. Did I leave them on the bass track or the? 
Um, I've left them on the snare drum track. So, you know, again, fills need to be added to this and a more um, engaging um, cymbal sounds. With the cymbals, I'm essentially moving all of them um, into, um, as you can see here, um, I've done it for, I played them separately on a separate track, so I'm just moving the MIDI up into the full kit. And so essentially that last track there will disappear and I'll just end up with these three drum tracks. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's going to um, make kind of sense, some, some sense. Also, what I'm trying to do at the moment is um, re-record the bass along with the drum. So, um, to try and get pull it a bit more into the pocket with the drums. I'm happy with the I haven't had to quantize or I haven't bothered trying to quantize any of the drums. Um, I played it on a keyboard to a click. Um, I'm happy with it. Uh, so it may waver a little bit, but I'm not concerned. It's in, in time, certainly. Um, I just don't, actually, if it wavers, it's more about feel rather than anything else. Um, and then, yeah, so uh, I need to re-record the bass. I'm not re doing anything with the guitar. I need to re-record the vocals. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, potentially where I'm going to write in um, some more dynamic, um, which will, I think, add to the, the, the song. So it's in service of the song itself, but also will increase the length um, of it and make it, I think, more a more complete sort of piece, if that doesn't sound too... Um, pretentious anyway uh, and so there's a moment in the original uh, version that I recorded between the first and the second verse where everything just goes to kind of a, a just a, a screech for like four bars so kind of thinking I don't think that necessarily that might I might try and do something along those lines but um, I quite like it in that original version, so it's just it's just putting that bit back in essentially and finding a way of doing that. Um, but I thought I'd take that idea maybe a little bit further at the end of the second verse and right before it goes into the bridge and have some kind of, um, uh, well I'm not sure what actually, um, just some kind of interlude. Um, and I have this sense that maybe it's something where. Uh, uh, it it kind of pulls the song down, um, sort of a descending sort of feel to it before it goes into the very sort of somber, kind of funerally feel of that middle bit. Um, anyway, so that's where I'm thinking at the moment, and I suppose if you combine both of those things, you're probably only adding like four to eight bars, or maybe twelve bars, or something like that. But you know. I don't think it needs much more than that, um, but I do also think actually my other thought was that um, the bridge, I think now where I've got the vocal coming in kind of halfway through, which um, it's still very much a guy vocal, so I'm not going to put that in here now, um, but uh, the way I've got the vocal working with that at the moment, it kind of sounds like that could be extended out again, so it will run three times essentially the same sequence will run three times um, in there. Um, so yeah, so I'm quite excited about where I am. I really like the drum beat. Um, I'm quite excited about the fact that I've got a few steps to go. Um, I don't know if I'm going to push this to try and push this to completion, like the track as a whole, or whether I'm going to take a bit more of a nuanced view of it and maybe have a look at another song in between, but... Uh, this, uh, yeah, episode five.